quick review today of the XFX XTS 520. This is a 520 watt fully modular power supply unit. It's also 80 plus platinum rated. We'll have a look on the back. We'll see some of the features apart from the platinum rating. The other main headline feature is the lack of fan. No fan at all in this unit, so it's completely silent. The high power efficiency will also be a factor in the reason why it's completely silent it's because it generates less heat, so it's able to cool itself passively without the use of a fan. Looking on the bottom here, this just gives you the rough power output here. 520 watts is pretty good. You can run a couple of um, medium graphics cards off of this and a fairly highly overclocked normal system. It's only really if you're using top end cards that you might run into problems. Looking at the connectors, good bunch here. We get to up to eight SATA connectors, which is the main interest really for me. Um, I have about three, sometimes four hard drives internally and two optical drives. Looking at the manual, you do get a bit more information here. It also gives you the cable lengths and most of the cable lengths for the SATA and the Molex connectors are over 60 centimeters long, so they're quite a good length on those. Doubt you'll have any problems fitting these to a normal size case, even a slightly larger case. I have a mid-sized tower, no problems at all, plenty of cable length there. Opening up the box, it's a pretty minimal package. You don't get any add-on extras. There's no case badges. You just get the cables included in the box and some screws and obviously the power supply. There are no other additional items included. There's no carry bag or anything like that. So really that's that's fine by me. I suppose it keeps the cost down slightly, although this is roughly averaging at around about £110 sterling in cost. Cables are all flat with the exception of the main power cable, which is braided and a round type. The flat cables can be twisted around and made into a round sort of shape if you want. Each of the connectors is marked, so you will be able to see exactly where they go. For example, the PCI Express ones for the graphics cards, if you need them, and you have two of those. Can't really complain on the quality of that. This is the main power cable. Braiding quality is good on this. And the connectors are a good fit in the power unit as well. Finally, we're moving on to the actual power supply. Taking a look at that, you'll notice the important notice which is strapped around the power supply. Pretty good padding on this as well. It had um, quite a lot of foam padding in there. There's the power cable. Now, this must be installed with the grill section here facing up, so that applies whether you are fitting it at bottom or at top. There was no mention at all in the manual about not fitting it to a top mounted case, um, so I assume there's no problems with that. I fitted it to one and I haven't had any issues so far. Moving in a bit closer, just to have a look under the sort of grill here, we can see we have oversized heat sinks on some of the critical components. We've also got the coils are wrapped, most of them pretty neat and tidy there's no obvious fouling or mess inside on the circuit board which is exactly as I would expect this is a relatively expensive power supply unit so I would expect good case quality and it is quite a nice case sides have vents and you'll notice on the back we well, normally have um, on some power supplies an exhaust fan or just semi uh, grill section this has a lot of grill sections as in it's almost completely exposed behind that that's to give it some additional airflow. So both of the sides have vents as well. Moving on to the back section here, or rather the front, we can see the connectors for the motherboard and the ID in SATA, and the CPU also slots in next to the PCI Express connectors there. Good firm connections on there, no problems at all. It's very easy to set this up, it's well laid out. This is just looking at the top part which will become the bottom part, depending on well, whichever case you fit it to, this will be uh, the bottom section. There is some ventilation on a few parts. And again, looking at the top, you'll notice that it is slightly recessed. So even if it's fitted flush to the case, there should still be a bit of a gap there because 
it's actually pressed, the metal is pressed in slightly so it gives it a bit of extra space. What I've done here is because I have a slightly different case, this is a Cooler Master case and I had an acoustic insulation on all of the panels, there was a section with the power supply that had uh, the foam insulation at the top because I don't want to obstruct the top grills and reduce the airflow I actually removed that and it's not really needed because it's not going to generate any noise it's really for a, a normal power supply where it would help to dampen any noise so it's important to make sure if you're mounting the top case that you have a bit of space there now if I compare it to the Cooler Master uh, this Silent Pro one that it's replaced, it's a slightly higher 600 watts, it's a touch longer but it's pretty similar in size. Never had any problems with the Cooler Master one, I've just sort of upgraded it. Here I've just done an initial fit, I have to tidy the cables up a bit. Now usually it's a good idea to tidy them up and try and keep them flat because it will allow some additional airflow to come in. You see I have a fan at the front here so that will push air through a bit. So the less cable that I have in the way the airflow will improve. On the back fairly easy it was reversed so in this case I just had to push in a couple of those tabs and cut them off. Inside you'll see here I also have some that's a, a jellied slot with a mesh filter on the front so I sometimes use that just to help the passive graphics card which I've got fitted I'll be upgrading that shortly and it just gives a bit of extra airflow at the bottom of the case moving out. Here it is after I've tidied it up a bit with the cabling. Just to keep the cables down, I use some cable ties and I also have some adhesive pads to attach the cable ties to. It just makes it tidier. You see that cable at the top there, I've also kept that out of the way. So it's about a centimetre's gap. Very quick demonstration now showing you how quiet the computer is. Now if you are building a quiet computer, my main suggestion here would be to make sure you have a decent exhaust fan, 120mm, I use either the Noctua or the Gelid fans and they're nice and quiet and because they're larger they produce a decent airflow as well. From this case it's pretty close to as quiet as you can get, you'll maybe get a small bit of noise coming off of the hard drives that have a couple of optical ones and a solid state. Um, there wouldn't be much point getting this power supply if you're going for a quiet computer and you have noisy components inside. So wrapping up with the XFX power supply, it is identical to the Seasonic one that I've seen. The only difference is you have to register for the five-year warranty. It's three out of the box, so that perhaps explains the slight price difference, but a nice power supply either way.